fall in love with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, fun fact. Um, that is currently on the sign of come as you are. No. It is. No. We were driving down the street the other day. And my son looks at it and he looks at me and he has like this like, you know, just you know, Christian, you know, pious eyes. And he's like, Mom, have you fallen in love with Jesus? <laughs> oh. Faith can feel like hearts and butterflies until someone lights a match and burns it all to the ground. Welcome to the Burning Butterflies podcast. The sad thing is, is that there's abuse of every kind within the church. Um, but the spiritual abuse is the stuff that just well, will... a place there shouldn't be abuse. Like, there just shouldn't be abuse in a place that claims to. Well, in a, it just... It ruins your soul. If you're new here, we suggest listening to our prologue episode first. This is the story of two women's journey through toxic church culture and spiritual abuse, all while finding healing in the end. Sometimes it's just the facts, and if you get offended by it, that's that's a you issue. Um, and if we can't be mature enough to have these conversations, even if some of the topics are difficult, then shame on us. The fall of 2017, we have the fall campaign um, because, yeah, we do that every year. <laughs> it's in the playbook. And, it's in the playbook. Yeah, but this yep, is a big and, deal. Like having this fall campaign and the decorations that went along with it, like this is a catalyst for future honestly decor changes that were well no it (laughs) it really was so when we had originally built the building it was very much like we had these like big giant black like stage curtains right and and they got hung up on the wall mostly as like a a light and sound absorber right Um, and as we progress, you know, other churches have backlighting and, you know, all of this stuff that is now the norm in a lot of, you know, evangelical churches. So Tom has always been very much like, we are not a concert. We are, we are here to worship God. This is not a concert. Um, but you know, it also... And wait a second. This isn't like this isn't let's... your grandma's Baptist church either, Tom. Okay. It's not like no right. Like it's it's like it was stuck in a weird I just had this this crazy epiphany. It was it was stuck in this weird transition between your grandma's Baptist church and 1990 seven I don't know <laughs> like, like it was modernish modern enough that it wasn't you know pews or I don't know you if you've ever walked into one of the older churches you know you know it wasn't that yeah right but and I loved these I did love them and there's no no insult and no no offense to those who put their blood, sweat, and tears into making these because the craftsmanship was phenomenal and the heart behind it was wonderful. But just so you understand how <laughs> next to God Master Life was, that we had the, the verses from Master Life were made into quilts and these quilts were wall hanging quilts and they were hanging on the walls in the church. So yes, yes, 
we were modern-ish. <laughs> but there were still quilts on the wall. Um, when we joke and say we were at that Baptist church with an electric guitar, that's 100% what we were. Like, we had fake ferns and quilts hanging on the wall. Um, and so... You know, which is fine for a certain demographic, but if you are wanting to, like, we have this family ministry now. We're trying to draw in young families. We have whole ministries for them. Um, you know, we we pride yeah. ourselves the young on young people on, are leaving the church, Amanda. You have to do something. Yes. So, um, the. The come as you are, Beth Moore, like, I love what she did. And honestly, I think if anyone else would have approached Tom at this time and said, hey, let's try this, um, it would not have gone well. I know she probably had to fight tooth and nail to be able to do some of the stuff she did to bring the stage a little bit more current, um, adding like up lighting and yeah. well i almost and, you know all of this different stuff if she like under the guise of the fall campaign because it's a big deal and we need to make it big and how do we get everybody involved well let's put some stuff on the stage for it if she didn't just use that as like her foot in the door and then i wonder how much of like cuz she could have she could have put it up in a way that matched the decor of the church, but she didn't. Yeah. She chose a completely opposite color scheme, completely aesthetic, opposite yeah. aesthetic and like, but did it for the purpose of we needed to bring the lighting and everything on the stage into this new era anyway. And she was doing it the way that it needed to be done. But it just, it was a completely, a stark contrast to the aesthetic that the church was before. So I almost wonder, like, how much of a fight it was. I feel like it wasn't a fight for the idea. I feel like there might have been a fight as it progressed when the realization that this isn't look like what we've been doing. Like, I feel like, well, we're too far along yeah. now. There might have been some tensions there. Well, and Tom hates change. Like, yeah. Tom hates change. Hate. And he uses uses the guise of, you're going to hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. We can't take the, the quilts down because you're going to hurt the ladies' feelings who made them. Well, half the ladies who made them don't go to the church anymore. So are they really going to care? Um, you know, one of them died. Like, I think she's fine if we take the quilt off the wall, you know? Like, yeah. And, and one of the ladies that made him is the one changing the stage decor. <laughs> oh, I didn't know she was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, there's... You, you need to update with the times because it is new generations. And yes, you walk this fine line of like, we're not just going to conform because like, you don't want people to come into church. They, they should come to church for Jesus, not for, you know, a light show or not because of what color the wall is painted and all of this. And so there is that fine line that you walk. I totally understand that. And that's not what this is about. This is, we do do this fall campaign and Tom, I've had to change things in the past because this is, this is the fall where because the fall campaign, she put up the stuff on the stage, Brandy and I rearranged the lobby. So the lobby has been the same way. I mean, we're going on what? Six years. Yeah. Since we've, came into the church building. And so the lobby has looked the same way and as everything is in the same spot for six years. So we do some rearranging and good Lord, you would have thought we asked Tom if we could like rearrange the books of the Bible. And so 
I had to be like, well, let's just, can we just do it? And if anyone complains about it, we'll move it back. Like, let's just, let's, let's do it. And if anyone complains. Give it a try. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm asking for you to give it a week. And if anyone this Sunday complains, we'll put it back. And no one complained. Right. And so, you know, so I can only imagine like that she had to do a yeah. little bit of that, like gymnastics to convince oh, yeah. him, you know, but like she did a phenomenal job. Yeah, she did with this like it looked awesome like so the aesthetic of come as you are is very much like um 1999 like that maroon color that was very popular in people's homes and beige yeah um and brown like that is the aesthetic of come as you are um so think like thomas kincaid is the vibe yeah. Right. Like, and so she comes in and what she puts on the stage is this black and white contrasting thing. And it like with lighting that you could change the color of the lighting so you can kind of change the mood. And I, I think she freaking rocked it. Yeah. And the girl knows her stuff. Like yeah. she, it's not like she was just like trying to hodgepodge crap together. No. Like she knows her crap. And I think she did amazing. Yeah. But this fall campaign, um, it was a four part thing. And for the life of us, we cannot remember the fourth part. So if you are listening and you are an OG come as you are person, um, please feel free to reach out and let us know, um, what that fourth part was because we can't remember. Yeah. Um, and so it we know that it was like the four B's, right? There was four of them. And it was believe, belong, become. And we know there was another one in there. We just can't remember what it was. Um, and so as we were preparing for this episode, we were like, well, Tom rips everything off. We were trying to remember what the fourth one was. And so we were like, Tom rips everything off of something. And so we wonder if we just Google it. Believe yeah, what's going to come. come? I kind of almost wondered if you Googled it, if like an old Facebook post or something would like pop up. But like, I was like, just Google it. See what happens. <laughs> it's, it's, something's probably out there in the interwebs. <laughs> What'd you find, Amanda? What did you find? <laughs> um... <laughs> This is going to shock the crap out of all of you. So I shock like everyone you. hold on. If if you're listening while you're driving, you may want to pull over. Um, <laughs> Tom ripped this off. <laughs> I know. I love how your comment was. You were like, you were like, it was probably some Rick Warren thing. And then you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, not Rick Warren, but definitely someone else. <laughs> Yeah. So I can't find like where it originated from, right? Like there's a couple people that have written like Bible studies or books on it, but it is a gospel sharing technique that is well known that there are several books and stuff written on it. Um, the most like prominent one is someone wrote a book uh, like sharing the gospel message with children. But it's a discipleship techniques So is what it ask, is. Let me ask you a question. Did you feel at any point in time during this time of this fall campaign, campaign that Tom had gotten that from somewhere else? Oh, no. I, <laughs> I was so into the Kool-Aid. I fully believe like these were revelations from the Lord um to tom directly telling god telling tom what the people of come as you are needed to hear yeah. we were living like the letters of revelation we were living that yeah. in real time yeah i i honestly when i think about 
like I was shocked not only that it was from somewhere else I mean like I really was shocked like I was like I thought because he was so big on acronyms and acrostics and you know things having like the same letter or like the doing stuff like it was his thing so it was like I totally thought that he came up with this and not only was I shocked and then all of a sudden not so shocked that he ripped it off from somewhere but the fact that the image that is used in one of them is the exact images that were used at come as you like so it could just be like oh yeah somebody else had these words no the books got the exact same image of the image that we used at come as you are like come on now yeah so it like had these arrows right yeah and that's what um Beth that's Moore. what Beth Moore did was like she took these arrows and like on this like big black board she cut out the words like you know believe belong become and whatever the other one was and because he added one she we can't find anywhere there was a fourth word no so he added and his so own word, which is why we he can't added his own it probably made no damn sense yeah it was probably and, behave. like we <laughs> we, that's what we've joked that it, it was behave because like you have to behave um and so it, it 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 looked really cool and she had cut out and i mean like we're not talking like little props right like i mean these were like six foot tall boards that yeah she did all of this and then she put up lights on it so it was like a black board with white cutouts and so when you put like up lights on it, like it looked really awesome. Yeah. And she did a phenomenal job. Um, but <laughs> so if you Google it, it is in the order of belong, believe, become. And we know Tom had it in a different order because at one point he switched belong and believe and we can't remember if he had it right or if he had it wrong first and then switched it i think he had it wrong first he had believe belong become and then he switched it to be right because and his hit and the only reason I think this is because I vividly remember him moving it that day because when he started moving stuff on stage, like the lights like moved and stuff. And like, all I could think was like, Oh my gosh, Beth Moore's soul is probably like leaving her body in the sound booth right now. Like watching him like fumble around with this stuff. Um, but so he switched two of them and his reasoning was he realized that you can come to come as you are and you can belong to come as you are and you don't have to believe what we believe. But if you want to become a member of the kingdom of God, you need to believe. And so there are people here in this room right now who belong here. You belong here. Even if you don't believe what we believe, you belong here. Yeah. And it was this like attempt at inclusivity, but really he was saying like, you can belong here. We'll, we'll convince you. Like <laughs> you need us to help. We'll, you. <laughs> yeah. Like we'll, we'll just give you some Kool-Aid and then you'll, you'll believe. Yeah. So, and then when you look it up, fine. you're like, I think he just realized he had him in the wrong order. <laughs> he had it backwards. And so, we know for a fact Tom didn't order the book and read it. We know for a fact we didn't order the Bible study. Otherwise, the whole damn church would have been doing the Bible study. And so I so think sure he, he probably saw, got... I thought it was a good idea and then decided how he could make it better was to add a fourth word. And then he presented it as his sermon series for our fall camp. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we went full in. Like, I mean, we ordered bracelets with the little arrows on them. And so if you were ready to believe, belong, become, like, you got a little bracelet 
and yeah, it was, it, it was a whole thing. So we do that. But also during this time, this, this is really like Tom, if I think if you asked him, when is the times where you feel like God was moving through you and using you in the community, the fall of 2017 would be up there on his list because we're doing this big fall campaign. And when we do this fall campaign, we gaslight ourselves into believing that like, this is the time where all of these people are going to want to come to church. Because do you want to come to church for the first time on Christmas? No. You don't want that to be your first time coming in a church. So you're going to come to church leading up to the holiday season. And so we do these fall campaigns because we know all of these people are coming into the church and they're checking us out. And so we do these things, right? And so <laughs> and it's just, it's so stupid to say it out loud now because I like I I want our listeners to fully understand I understand just how full of crap I sound and how delusional I sound. Like, I get that. You're um, like, I did it. I was me. I was there. I was there. I yeah. Um, but also, it is during this time that Tom comes to the church body and he says, the, the little Baptist church, the Baptist church that he got his start at, in our town um, is struggling. This church has struggled for years. Their numbers were dwindling. They were, you know, they weren't growing the young people. That's why we have to grow our young people. And that's why we have to get involved with family ministry. And um, honestly, like, I think this is why Beth Moore was allowed to redecorate the stage. I really think like that probably and I I didn't put that two and two together until, you know, just the second. But um, I think that's why she was allowed to do what she did on the stage. Because all of this was going on behind the scenes. So, I mean, we're talking, I don't know, mid-September-ish. Um, Tom tells us that this church that has been struggling... Um, we are going to help them the same way we helped the poor people who owned the property that we built our building on. We are going to help the Baptist church the same way we helped them. I don't remember if he ever on stage came out and said, we bought the Baptist church. I don't think he ever came out and said it. I think it was one of those, like, it was implied, and if you know, you know. But I think if you were just the average Joe Schmo sitting in the, the seats on Sunday, I think you could have assumed we're just helping them. Yeah. We didn't yeah, own the property. Yeah. I Because I feel like I either missed that memo or like <laughs> something, because I mean, like, that was not part of the, that's not part of my working knowledge of my experience that like that this church just one day decided it was going to build or build. It was going to buy a piece of property or like a building. Like, I don't know. Like to me, it seems like if you are in an organization, like a church, there's yeah. you know, boards and financial people that, do things and you take things to congregations and like, I mean, I've been a part of enough churches and seen how like big decisions get made. It's not a small decision to buy a building. Like this isn't like, Hey guys, Hey guys, the worship team is going to need a new piano. And so um, we'd like you all to be okay if we spend a few hundred dollars on a piano, right? Like, this isn't, this is well, like, but honestly, this is, hold hey on. guys, we're going to buy another church. And in a healthy on board with us taking the church money to buy another church. It never came out that way. 
But in a healthy church, the we need a few hundred or a few thousand dollars to buy a new piano. That is part of like public knowledge. Like, because that's a lot of money. It's not like, do we buy you know, the more expensive brand of copy paper. Right. Okay. Like, I guess you're right. I guess I should you know, have said that. I but like, said like, we're going to change paper clips from the, no, the I metal think... ones to the rubber covered ones and we need approval. No, you're buying a freaking building. So whether he said yeah. it on stage or not, I can tell you in my experience of going to church there, there was never a conversation to the level that it needed to be that this church was going to buy another church. Like that's a big deal. Well, and okay. So I think you proved the point of like who Tom really is, because Tom would go and buy a piano without telling anyone. He would use other ministries money to go buy a piano without telling anyone. I know. I told um, the story where he finagled the and computer so, like, out of a ministry. <laughs> Yeah, but if that doesn't no, prove, he buys. Sorry, go ahead. I'm so flabbergasted by this, but if that doesn't prove this sole yeah. leadership structure of this church, like I thought we had already flushed all that out, but I did not know as a fully invested member of Come As You Are that they bought another church building property. Like this is a huge property. Yeah. So they bought the church building and the parsonage next door. Yeah. So they owned the church and then the little house next door and the church bought it. Like if you go on the County assessors website and you look at the history of that property, it says come as you are church owned it. Yeah. It does not say Tom. It says, come as you are church. Yeah. The church owned that property. Yeah. yeah. The and so they bought that property. of a church made a decision for the church to buy a building. <laughs> and I don't think anybody and I mean, knew. <laughs> I don't. Well, I don't think anybody I mean, was in on it. I don't think anybody knew. I have been a part of big decisions. And I think Tom called certain people he knew would be on board with it and asked them what they thought so that he would have plausible deniability and be able to say, I didn't do this by myself. I asked so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. Um, I'm sure a few of those so-and-sos probably had to help bankroll it. Um, but when it comes down to it, if the church owned the property, the church's money was used to buy that property. And that was not something that was decided upon by the church. And we do not have a board of elders at this point. No, it is and Tom. hold on. Hold on a second. And I think this is what flabbergasts me the most. As I've sat in budget meetings at this church, I've, I've sat in the the, when we present the financials at the, the January meeting, like the church bought a building. How the heck did it do that? Like I just, I, mm, mm. <laughs> and I, I do know at that, at the, so like we're in August of 2017. So at the January of 2018 meeting, there is a, like, here's what we bought the building for. Here's what we spent to renovate it. And here's what we're asking for, for it. Right. Like I do know that was presented. I remember that because I was in the office as they were trying to like build those, those things. So it was presented, but I think in the moment, like in August, September of 2017, no, it was not come no one came out and said, we bought this building. And so it Don't is a, that that we are helping. Happened? Like, hey, church, we're thinking about spending this obnoxious amount of money <laughs> to buy a property in a church. Like, no, the, the church I currently attend is building a building. 
today we're planning on using like the folding chairs because they're in a high school right now set up in the gym every week. They were planning on just using those folding chairs for a few years in the sanctuary. It, another church is downsizing and offered up my church, their chairs for a extremely discounted price. Right. And that is something that was brought to the church as like, Hey, we have this opportunity to buy cushion chairs instead of folding chairs. Is this something you guys want? And if so, this is how much it's going to cost us. Like, freaking chairs. Chairs. Not a building. A full-on effing building and a house next door. Like, if our listeners are like, what what the heck is Melissa's problem right now? I didn't know any of this before five minutes ago. And my brain is like, what? Like, like none of, like, if you haven't gotten to the point where you understand the insanity of soul leadership, where one man is making one decision and taking advantage of a tech status called a church to bankroll whatever the hell he wants. And if he wants a building, he wants a building, like all in the name of, but why wouldn't you bring it to the church? If it's such a great idea that we're going to help out this other church. And the idea is, to flip the building. Like I get the logic. The church is only going to be out the money. He's thinking, wait, six, seven months, right? You know, a year at the most at this time, he's probably like, we'll buy it. We'll turn around and we'll sell it. We'll clean it out. We'll sell it. Yeah. Nobody's the wiser. Yeah. Why not tell anybody? Why not make it a big deal? Why not make a big deal? (laughs) I can't. And, and really, the the biggest deal that was made about it was the fact that now we need manpower. Yeah. We need manpower to come in and flip this. But it is very, very, very much made clear. It is full of stuff. We do not need people to come through and go through this stuff and bring it back to our church. We have our own stuff. We're not taking their old stuff made very clear. In fact, there are several women who would love to go through all this old crap and they are told, nope, we, the church is empty. The church is empty. So come October, when we are getting word, the church is not empty And we're to the point where the guys are ready to start working on stuff and there's rooms, not joking, rooms piled to the ceiling full of stuff, just shoved and piled, hoarder style. Um, Now we need people who are actually going to work their butts off and we are going to need them to come in and help clean this stuff out. So... Brandy went over with Charlotte um, to start going through stuff. I think I was brought in because I think between Brandy, Charlotte, and Charlotte's mom, they wanted to keep too much stuff. And I was brought in to be the voice of reason because if anything, Amanda is like, just throw it away. Throw it away. (laughs) No, we do not need an old hymnal from 1972. We don't even use hymnals. If you think it's cool and you like it, put it in your house. We don't need it at the church. Yeah. Like there was this idea of like, We need to take this and preserve the history of this church. And so, like, we're going to go over on our Patreon. We're going to go into a little bit more detail of, like, what really went on as we were, like, cleaning out this church and stuff like that. But 
For the rest of this episode, I want to talk about the house next door. (laughs) Oh, yes. The house next door. (sighs) It was always, we are going to, we are flipping this and we are going to sell it as a church and a parsonage together. That is what I was always told. Oh, that's and not what I was as told. we were well, I know. As we were cleaning things out, I remember going over to the house because someone was like, Have you walked through the house? And I'm like, No. So they're like, Oh, come on. Froggy gave me a tour. And Froggy was so excited to show me what they were doing to flip the house. Yeah. Why Actually, was Froggy I think so originally- excited? I feel like originally they thought it would sell as one unit, but then I think the church that wanted it didn't want the the parsonage. parsonage. I think that's what happened. Gotcha. Now that I think about it. Well, why was Froggy so excited, Melissa, (laughs) to give me a tour? Well, you know, Froggy's been back now for a couple months, back on track, doing what he's supposed to be doing. And, you know, he's looking for work and I'm not sure if he went back to work for the guy at church, you know, on and off. He might have been working for him, Um, but he, Tom and Froggy have this arrangement where If Froggy doesn't have a job, then Froggy is at the disposal of Tom and the church and um, anyone else that might need assistance. So if you called the church and you were like, hey, we're moving on Saturday and we could just, you guys, do you know anybody that helps with that? Um, Tom would be like, sure do. Hey, call Froggy. Froggy have to go help you move. <laughs> you know, um, something's broken somewhere on the church. We got a fence down. Tom, call Froggy. Froggy, come fix it. <laughs> right? Um, oh my goodness! So we need a trailer here. We need a trailer there. We need this. We need that. Like if he didn't have a job, he was he was daddy's yes yes boy. Um, so. During this time, like I said, he might have been working on and off for the one guy at the church now. I I can't, honestly can't remember. But I do know that he started working um, at the Baptist church. And this is where I get really surprised, like how I didn't know that the church had bought it. And like, I was... Because he, he was working there for so long. Yeah, well, because, like, I mean, like, he was definitely involved. And honestly, it could just be me. I mean, I guess I'm just like, how did I miss that? But I had asked because I was under the impression that we were helping the Baptist church. And then all of a sudden, something gets said about... so. Froggy's going there every day and working on the church and cleaning it out. He's working on the house. And then the next thing I know, like I go to see the house and I'm like, oh, this is what you guys are doing. This is cool. And somebody mentioned selling it. And I'm like, they're selling it. And somebody goes, no, we're selling it. And I was like, who's what? And that's when I found out that come as you are owned it. And I was like, oh, okay. Gotcha. And then there, was a, there was another conversation about the people that had, because the house was being rented. So the church was renting out the house. The Baptist church was renting out the parsonage to a family that I've known, like, since I moved to this town. Mm-hmm. And so I did not know that the Baptist church was renting out this house. Like I knew the people that live there. They've li- they lived there for years and years and years and years. And I didn't realize that the Baptist church had the house next door, that it was a parsonage. Like it was, cause it was a family that lived there, not associated with the church. And then the church, had yeah. kind of, 
stopped using the building. So there was no connection in my mind that those two pieces of property were connected. And then when people started talking about come as you are, was going to sell this property. I was, I was like, Oh, the church owns it. And it was presented to me like the church has always owned it. So like when you said that they bought it in 2017, I was like, I totally thought that like come as you are owned it for years and that this family that I knew had been paying rent to come as you are for years. <laughs> and I'm just like, so I didn't even realize like that what had gone down and it could be me being oblivious. But, um, so, you know, Froggy's on this like good track. He's back at it doing what he needs to be doing. He's, he's, he's the, being treated like the king of the castle again, because that's who he is. He's a man. He's the good, godly Christian man of his house. And you know, you know what he really needs? He needs a home of his own. And so. Because he can't live in a house that his wife. Yeah. He has. can't live in, he can't live in his wife's house because it's not his. Because anytime we get in a fight, I could kick him out because it's my house. And I'm like, no, it's our house. Like, I've invited you in. I've made you king of the castle. <laughs> like, it, it boggles my mind. You're like God above all in yeah. this house. It's, it's our house. It's our house. I just don't want you to be abusive. Right. Or destroy it. Like, so. Yeah. But, like, it's not that anybody was doing that to him, saying, like, this is my house you can go. But yes, at the end of the day, if you break stuff and you're abusive and your daddy's got to come drag you out of the house, then guess what? Yeah, I get to lock the door and say you don't get to come back because well, I lived here and before you. I could see Tom feeding into that, too, because Tom very much was like, a, well, what she says goes and it's her house. And if she decides, like, he would say crap like that yeah. about you. So, yeah. like. I could see him feeding into that of like, no, Froggy, you need your own place. Yeah. You can't All your live problems with because... will be solved when you're really in charge. She because can't really kick in you our... out. Yeah. She can't kick you out if it's your house. And so that was like, that was the big push was that. When in all needed... honesty, Tom was tired of having to go and drag him out. Yeah. He was annoyed. Right. And like, let's you be, can't let's kick be, him out of something he owns. Let's be completely honest about this insanity. Like, this is your logic. This is going to solve the problem. Let's not let's not get real help. Let's not let's not figure out why you're angry and why you're abusive and why you got to break stuff all the time and why you know every woman has the same story to tell Tom about your son. Like, let's not, let's not deal with those issues. You know what? Let's get you your own house. And then she can't kick you out. No, now they can all just, I'll just pack up my stuff and leave. Then that's fine. You know? And then I'm the one out on the street with five kids. Okay. But I'll be fine. But anyway, so this was going to save, this was going to, this was going to save us all. Right. And this is the first time that there's actually like, this happens again in a couple of years, but for right now, like this is the first, like Froggy gets it in his head that we are going to buy this house. He's buying this house. So he's Which working I on don't, it. What? I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone knew that was the plan. I think right. You, Tom, and Froggy knew that was the plan. Well, and I I didn't know. Well, so, yeah. So, I don't know how these talks happen, but I do know, like, I come over and I look at the house. Like, I got brought over to look at the house. And I was like, yeah, this is cute. And Froggy's like, yeah, we could totally buy this house. Like, what do you think? Do you want to buy this house? You know, like, now he's trying to sell me on buying this house. And we could live here. And I was like, yeah, this is cute. This would be nice. Like. We could, you know, like, let's, we could see if we could make that work, right? Well, then it comes out. So then it comes out at some point that 
the church can't sell Froggy the house because that would be nepotism. So there has to, it has to go on the market. Like it has to go on the market. There has to be legitimate offers on it. Like you can't just wiggle a deal and magically. Yeah. We, we can't sell it to you behind closed doors. It has to go on the market. Yeah. You have to make a legitimate offer. Right. And like, Tom yes. can't legitimately then help Froggy buy it because he's entangled in the owning of it through the church. Like that would have. So that stopped that process momentarily. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, then it became, well, maybe. Maybe my mom would like want to help us figure out how we can, you know, buy the house and your and, mom, uh, my mom. Yeah. So like, oh, Tom and Charlotte can't do it. So let's have your mom yeah. all the way from and, California and who is... just lost her husband. <laughs> right. Let's have yeah. her buy you. a house. Well, yeah. And my house is my house is tied up in a in a trust fund. Um, and so, um, no, I'm not a trust fund baby, but <laughs> for legal reasons to protect me from said things, <laughs> uh, there has been protections put in place <laughs> and my house is in a trust fund. Um, and you know, thank God my mom, my mom did that. And that, that's been, oh, that yeah. actually, I mean, that's been a saving grace and especially going I think through. that saved your ass in your marriage with froggy. Yeah. And I think she saw the writing on the wall and she very much, um, had my back in that and, and definitely. And so, um, so since, since my house is tied up in a, in a trust fund, um, all of a sudden it became a, we well, got to talk to your mom about how we can, you know, offload this house and and will she give you any money out of it will she give you money to buy this house like like it became a push for all that and you know fortunately that just wasn't going to happen so but they Did tried you like ask your mom um you know what i had like or were mentioned... you just kind of like uh yeah that's not gonna work yeah, I kind of like <laughs> skirted around the like the idea of like just said enough things to get enough information, like not in a way of like her helping us out, but like if we decided to buy another house, like if we wanted to move, what does that entail? What would that look like? Like so I did have that conversation with my mom, not so much in the like, I just told him she said no. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you know, I got enough information from her about what the process would look like to undo the situation that I'm in with my house anyway. You know what I mean? So, um, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. and I knew she was going to say, say no, because she was very adamant on some other things, you know, with the issues so, like you just know. Um, yeah. and, and she was very verbal about that not being a good idea anyway, even if she wasn't going to help, she was very vocal about, I don't think that's the best decision. You know, like yeah. she was more concerned about me deciding to move and be in that situation with Froggy in general, like as yeah. much as she wants, as much as she would be like, yeah, you guys should go do that. Be great. It wasn't like that. It was like, are you sure? Like, I don't know if that's a good idea. I'm sure that's not a good idea. She always, she had a lot of reservations that she presented about that. Um, so it was very easy to say she said no, because she did essentially, you know? Um, and then, yeah, like, and then he tried like, um, different avenues like there was really a big push of like how can we make this work we need to make this work <laughs> but it was all under the guise of this is going to save our marriage yeah 
this will this is gonna this is the thing. Everything will be perfect if Froggy just has his own home. That's his. Which kind of like playing devil's advocate here, if that was really the push and that was the thing that was going to save Froggy, and if Tom and Charlotte really did love him and they really did want what was best for him why didn't they just go buy another house that they didn't already own and it wasn't nepotism and all of that stuff like it's not like that was the only house for sale in our town right in the fall of 2017 right and so if that was the case why not just go buy something else right and I don't, I don't have an answer Because they're not in a position to go buy something else. They had to get rid of what they had. <laughs> they bought a building. I was going to say, I don't have an answer for that other than the fact that I think them owning this church building now brought so much light on the fact that the church owned, come as you are, owned the Baptist church. Yeah. That... Tom can't be buying other properties. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. And like, I, let me just put it to you this way. Froggy believed. And like, I was on board as long as I didn't really have to like do like, you know what I mean? You know how you're like kind of half in half out. I was like, if it yeah, works, you're like, great. okay, well, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm all for it. I support you. If you want to make this happen, I'll go along with it, you know? So I was going along with it, but I was also like, is it never going to happen? Whatever. Like, I don't have my eggs in that basket. But he believed it so much that people in the church bought him, bought us. Like, they they bought lighting fixtures for the house but gifted them to us for our house like people believed that we were going to buy that house that you were going to live that is how much froggy believed he was getting this house by some miracle well, no reality yeah. And like, I didn't know that, but also, like I said, I was very much like I was kept, I was allowed to go to that building twice. Yeah. And I think the only reason I was allowed to go was to tell Brandy and Charlotte's mom, they could not take crap, but, um, it made so much sense when you were like, oh, no, we were supposed to live there. And I was like, oh, because it didn't, like, Froggy was not like the, look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. Like, do you see it? Do you see it? Like, he was not that way in, like, just with the general public. Yeah. Like, I'm sure he was that way, like, with his parents. But, like, not, like, just any random person. And I didn't have that relationship with him. Like, I mean, we really didn't have a relationship yeah. Other than like we were just two people who happened to go to the same church together. And so for me to go into that house and him be so excited to show me what they were doing. And he's like, because I remember going downstairs and he's like, yeah, so like this wall is here, but we're going to like take out this wall and we're going to turn this room into this and like really excited. And I was like, Okay, like Froggy is down for the flipping. I guess I don't, I don't know what. He found his new like, mansion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great, Froggy. Like, I I didn't realize yeah. at the moment it was it because so, it was his house. In so his weird mind. because you're right. That is not his. Like that's not his personality about anything. It's so crazy. I don't know. Yeah. So um. As as we bring you know uh, 2017 to an end, it it's gonna beg to ask the question: What does the church do when they actually sell this property? (laughs) 
Burning Butterflies is a listener-supported podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by our amazing supporters on Patreon. Follow the link in our show notes to learn how you can become a Patreon supporter, too. Supporters get exclusive access to bonus content each month, including outtakes, cut content, and supporter-only episodes. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating on your listening platform. Burning Butterflies is a production of Asha Media. Thank you for listening.